The Freshly Charged YouTube channel is going international. Our very own Andrew traveled all the way to Poland to ride with and learn from the amazing Adam of Wrongway, one of the EUC greats on YouTube. Oh yeah! Join the ride as Adam teaches us five EUC tips and the five biggest mistakes EUC riders make. We have Mr. Wrongway here. We're gonna go ride around beautiful Gdansk and at our first stop, Adam's gonna tell you his first tip on how to become a better EUC rider. Let's get it! So this is our first stop and make sure to also wait until the end of the video because I'm gonna give you an additional two bonus tips. So the first tip I wanted to give you is wheel calibration. In EUCs, especially in those King Song wheels, the wheel will dip if you go left or right and in the opposite direction it, the pedals will go up so essentially the whole wheel will be just wobbly and weird and that's what happens every once in a while sometimes you need to calibrate a wheel even when you get it right out of the box so the process is different for every sort of wheel and we'll do it on the king song here really quickly through the app get into horizontal cal calibration and first i'll show you how it looks like when it's not well calibrated. So now it is wrongly calibrated. If you put the camera really low to the ground, you can see it really well. If I spin the wheel, the pedals are dipping or tilting out. It's like here yeah. they go down, mm -hmm. turn right, they go up. And this is pretty much the easiest way to identify if the wheel is not well calibrated. You just spin it once you're stationary. So now I will calibrate the wheel well. Usually people do it against the wall and they have the pedals at zero degrees. I just tend to do it via my feeling. <laughs> so what I'll do then is again, press on apply. I'll try to grab the EUC just between my legs in a straight way, like this. Look down, look straight. And sometimes you need to do it a couple times. It doesn't work the first time around always. Keep it straight, wait for the last beep. And now pedals stay leveled. And a miscalibration can occur like at any time. You can, as said, have it out of the box this way. So now when the wheel is well calibrated, both when turning left or right, the pedals should stay leveled. So that's wheel calibration for you. Let's go to the next spot. All right, so the next tip I got for you guys is also a bit associated with calibration. I don't know if you guys know, but all wheels now, I think except for Bagode, you can adjust the angle for, of your pedals in the app or in the screen like on veteran wheels. What happens is when you start off it might be a bit difficult to get up to speed and start rolling on an EUC and if you tilt the pedals this way so the toes are lower than your heels it might be a bit easier to ride for you. And if you're an experienced rider and you feel like you get fatigue and you can play around with this feature to make sure that you have the most comfortable setting on your wheel. In King Song it's gyro angle adjustment so we're gonna click, click here and here you can see that you can adjust the slider to have the pedals dipped forward or backward. So I do it excessively so you can see it on camera. I did it at four. So now you can see EUC is really tilting back. If I do it the other way, do it minus three. Now you can see it adjusting the other way. I can do it even more. So now it's dipping forward. If you have the pedals tilted forward, it will be just easier to accelerate. It will be a bit harder to brake, but initially when you're starting out, it's important to just get the ball rolling, get up to 10, 15 kilometers an hour in order to have the balance when you're riding. Why would you want to tilt it forward as an expert? If you have it leaning forward, it's easier to accelerate. It might actually also take some stress off your feet when you're doing long distances because you just don't need to push the wheel so hard. More weight of you is in the front of the wheel. But actually, if you do have it tilted backwards, I prefer that a little bit for off-road because especially on EUCs like the veteran Sherman Max, you have the front very low to the ground and then you, you can, it's actually a bit harder to scratch the pedals, get a pedal clip or touch the front of the body of the wheel. So. For all situations, you can adjust this pedal angle. It's fairly easy on all EUCs to do that, either on the screen, like on the Veteran, or here in the app on King Song. It's not just set it and forget it. It's, hey, depending on what type of terrain you're riding, what type of skill level you're at, raise it up for off-roading. Want less fatigue on a long ride, tilt it forward. Great. Okay, let's go to the next spot. Yeah. By the way, congrats on 100,000 subscribers. I should have said that at the beginning no, of the video. No worries at all. I'm excited for you next. So the third tip I wanted to give you is actually best shown when riding. Especially when starting out, it's important to look where you want to go. If you look down at the EUC and you want to start, it will be very difficult to do it. So if you want to start riding, just look forward and look when you want to go. The body will follow. And the same thing applies to turning. If you turn your head to the right, you go right. It now even happens, you know, after four years of riding. It's just like, I guess, skiing or snowboarding. 
any sort of free hands ride, this is, it's very important to remember because it might be overwhelming at first just to know what's happening below you. But once you're on the EUC, just look where you want to go and it will make your learning process and your riding a lot more effortless. But I find a lot of people look down at the ground with any type of action sport, it's always look where you want to go. All right, so the fourth tip, when you're starting out to ride UNC, actually ride on it. Now, I did it the hard way and I started to ride at UC by learning how to have the UC stationary and try to put my foot on. And that works, but it's pretty frustrating. So initially when starting out, you can just grab a pole and then start riding. And once you see a red light or you see like you need to stop somewhere, it's best to find a pole or a wall or anything to get stationary and then you can dismount the EUC. This will save you a lot of headache and right away you will have the fun of EUC riding. All right guys, when riding on EUC, it's kind of hard to judge the speed where you're going at. So on e-bikes and on scooters, you have the throttle, which you kind of remember, where's the spot, where's the full throttle, where's half throttle. You don't really have that on EUC. And the second thing is you don't have a speedometer in front of you. You need to look down onto the screen, which is here, in order to see your speed, or you don't have a screen at all, and then it's even harder to judge speed. So there's a couple of instances where you need to remember not to go too fast. First one of them is when the road changes from a narrow road, like a bike path, to a wider road, like just a wider bike path or just a street. So then you might think that you're going slow, but you're actually going really fast just because of your perception. Things are further away from you, so you're, you think that you're going slower. Second instance, instance is backwind. So when you have backwind, you actually have less resistance in front of you and sometimes the wind can actually push you to accelerate more. And then you might just feel that you're going slow, but you're actually going really fast. Third instance is when the surface changes from a really you know, rough one to a very smooth concrete and you just want to go fast. Both Adam and I have learned the hard way that when you press the limits or you just don't pay attention to safety, you can end up eating pavement and it doesn't feel great. And you can endanger others. Definitely respect the wheels, respect the beeps. And at our next stop, Adam's going to go over the five biggest mistakes he sees with EUC riders. Let's hit it! Yeah. <laughs> right, now let's talk about the mistakes. So the number one mistake is not wearing a helmet, not wearing a lid. This will keep you safe and even if you're going somewhere really slow and I actually made this mistake recently I always ride with a helmet but then this one time I was like it's so hot in my motorcycle helmet I'm just so tired and that's where I cl crashed at low speed and the low speed crashes are pretty much as dangerous as the high speed crashes and that's why I just always wear a helmet I got myself now a helmet with a judgeable chin piece so in those rare instances where you feel like you should be just wearing a hat you can just take it off and cruise at slow speeds in the city. This is still better than taking the whole thing off. Lead by example and always wear a helmet. I've had my worst accidents at very slow speeds, so definitely make sure you wear a helmet. So the second mistake I wanted to mention, and this is actually a big one, is getting too excited or overconfident during a group ride. A lot of cutouts I see on wheels or where people get into wobbles or just lose control over the wheel is on group rides because you get excited and then you might just not be able to control the wheel anymore. You don't feel the speed, you're just in a rush, you wanna go fast and suddenly you go too fast and you just cut out on the wheel or you don't notice a speed bump, you don't notice a pole pothole. Oh, so nice. Of course on the UCs we have beeps, we have tilt back, we have more and more safety features that keep the rider safe. But compared to e-bikes, you get a lower battery, you just push the throttle and you get less performance and that's fine. But on the UCs you want to keep leaning the same way but then you might overpower it. So especially on performance, if you see when the battery state, I would say goes below 80 or 70%, you will have less performance, especially less top speed available on a wheel. So once you hit 20, 30, 40% battery, you have dramatically less top speed and you might overpower the wheel when accelerating on it or trying to do some racing, some jumps, etc. The other way around, when you have it fully charged, especially on bigodes, veteran wheels, uh, but also on King Song and Motion, but a bit less, you might overcharge the wheel if you'll be braking really hard or going down a long slope. So just remember to adjust your performance as a rider to the battery state that you're in. 
All right, so the next tip can really save you a lot of headache. Usually, when you start to feel really comfortable on the wheel, it just grips so well. Like the suspension or the, the comfort is so high, that's probably the moment where your tire pressure is too low. You need to really remember to check your tire pressure every once in a while. I keep my wheel pressure on those 20 inch wheels, usually around 38, 40 PSI, maybe 35. Usually the higher the tire pressure, the safer your rim is. And especially on those non-suspension wheels, like the Veteran Sherman Max, it's a lot easier to bend the rim once the tire pressure is low. So for all of the tricks I do, all of the hardcore off-road riding for stairs, uh, I tend to have even higher pressure around 45 PSI just to keep my rim safe. Now a bonus is if you get a aftermarket tire, like here I have a, a bit of a thicker Duro tire on the King Song. Those tires are more durable, they have thicker sidewalls, they have thicker compound, they will keep your rim a bit safer, but yeah, just remember to keep your tire pressure at the right spot around 40, 45 PSI. For me, a little bit more because I'm a little bit heavier, so adjust it based off of your weight. And then another tip I would say is if weather's changing drastically, from cold to hot, you wanna check it more often than just a few weeks. I find that overnight I can lose 20 PSI if it gets really cold. All right, so now for our final mistake before our two bonus tips. I see people just not maintaining their EUCs and I don't blame them because it's not in the owner's manual. So I'll just give you a couple of tips. First of all, once you get, uh, I don't know, three, four, five thousand kilometers on the clock, 2,000 miles, just check on your tire. They all have a different thread, different compound, if it's not balding. So once you see that in the middle you have just pretty much no uh, thread at all, it's time to change the tire and it's really dangerous to keep riding a bald tire. Next thing is, especially on those uh, suspension EOCs, we have a lot of screws in this back mechanism. Every second, third ride, especially if you go hardcore off-road, just check those screws if they're still tight. Use Loctite in order to keep those screws tight and maybe after 500 or 1000 kilometers, check on the inside of the wheel if everything inside is still intact. And let's hear about your bonus tips. Intercoms are amazing if you want to ride together with your buddy. You don't have to align next to your friend. You, you don't have to constantly keep a short distance. You can just easily talk and have no interruptions at all. Any intercom with a mesh interface will be awesome. The second bonus tip, this, a bell. I just have a bog standard bell on my backpack and this is what I found to be most useful in you know, city scenarios also going off-road because once people hear a bell, they know, aha, uh -huh, something is coming. Make sure to subscribe to Wrong Way. We appreciate you so much for showing me around Poland. And remember, when you ride, always wear your safety gear.